Hey guys, welcome back. So recently I became the owner of like a crap load more plants. I don't really know how it happened. Well, like I know how it happened, but I don't, I didn't plan for it to be this many. So today we're gonna go through my huge haul of plants. It's certainly more plants I've ever hauled in the last three years maybe. So it's huge by my standards. That's what she said. All these plants came from the States. So there's like some purchases, some gifts, some trades. And I just, it just accumulated over time. I think these things were like, you know, being planned for a while and all kind of arrived to me all at once. So yeah, it's like, it's a lot. Thank goodness they're small. I think there's like 13 plants. And I'm gonna show you a couple that aren't mine. They're gonna go to their future owner shortly. But yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for these and I don't have space for them right now. So all of them are living inside of this bin. And I'm just gonna go through them according to all the sources and like some of them have like, you know, some mini stories behind them. I'm just, I'm so excited for these. I think I'm gonna start with my plants that I got from Owen. So if you don't know Owen already, he is growing plants on Instagram. He, Owen is such a freaking angel. So after I posted my 2024 wishlist video, Owen reached out to me and was like, oh, I have this plant. Do you want a cutting of it? And I was like, um, absolutely not. Do not cut that plant. But he insisted. So we ended up working out like a trade. I personally don't think it was a very fair trade. Like he definitely gave me more than what I gave him, but I really didn't have anything that would suit his collection. He has like an incredible collection and I gave him whatever he wanted of mine, but like it wasn't that much, if that makes sense. So if you don't know Owen, he is the when linger I whisperer person. <laughs> he has like every when lingerie variant known to man. He didn't think he had mine, um, which is this guy right here. It's like a wide leafed, super thick waxy type that he didn't think he had. So I chopped mine like months ago. I held on to it for a bunch of time. It was growing. Um, we did this whole thing. We had to be shipped through Lauren because it's phytosanitary to the States. I also sent him a chunk of my BVEP from Amanda, which was originally from Paul. This is the BVEP that I cut and um, it was a nice big chunk with like one growth point. There was multiple nodes on it, but one active growth point and thank God it survived transit and it's been growing in his care. So that is what I sent him. So he sent me, I'm gonna show you the wish list plant first. I am still shook that I have this plant, but this, little baby is Anthurium Midnight Velvet. So this is a little pot from his plant. I'll just put in a photo of his mother plant here. And I'm so excited to have this, but also petrified because he was telling me a little bit about like what he was hearing from like other people who own this plant and just the research that he's done. And he's saying that like a lot of people find it very finicky. He says like this one, hasn't been giving him any grief and he keeps it like very wet, like wetter than normal anthuriums and almost like in my mind is kind of like how I treat my debile, which is like always sitting in water. So I'm gonna follow his instructions, but I am very, very petrified of this plant and I'm never growing it in ambient conditions, just never. So he had a bit of um, like a spider mite not outbreak, but like some spider mite damage here and there. So I've been keeping this isolated. It's just in a cup with like a hat and I'm gonna keep it there and just monitor for spider mites. And I'm probably going to repot it into tree fern soil. I think that's what he has his mother plant growing in. But this one has just been like, it was potted in moss when it was chopped. It's grown two leaves in moss. But oh my gosh, I am so excited to have this plant. I remember thinking that this was possibly like a pap dress hybrid, dress pap hybrid, but it has the most cool like purple emergent leaves and it has like, well right now on this one, it has like red veins, but I've seen uh, midnight velvets with like very purpley veins. So I'm sure it'll come with maturity. I'm looking at the petiole. It is, it is like many sided. It has like all these like, I don't know if you can see, but that, that kind of goes with the dress hybrid theory. And it has like a very elongated shape, like um, papillolamnum. So this is like a Australian unknown hybrid. I don't know who the original hybridizer was. Um, I'm just, I feel really, really lucky to have this plant. I cannot believe that one of my Australian hybrid wishlist plants was checked off this year and it's all thanks to Owen. Uh, so thank you so much. 
I, I just, I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have this plant. Um, I'm going to probably pot this up in tree fern maybe next week. I'm just out of pots right now. Like all, all my pots were taken up and certainly I want to cover up the stem to about here so that this can start rooting down. But yeah, so far I've had it for, I think, wait, how long has it been? Almost two weeks, I think. And I haven't seen any spider mites emerge. He's already treated everything. By the way, if anyone's interested, I asked what his spider mite attack protocol is and he uses um, Captain Jack's dead bug brew, which is uh, spinosad based. He takes everything to the shower in the dark, like without any lights, he sprays them, like just douses them in Captain Jack's, lets them dry off like that. And then he rinses every leaf off with warm water and then gets them back under light. For him, this doesn't affect emergent leaves. It doesn't burn anything. And he says like usually after like one or two applications, it's gone. And it's definitely because like spider mites are so, they become resistant to different pesticides so it's definitely one to like add to the rotation but I don't know if it's like one that you can use all the time every single time and expect it to work every single time but I have Captain Jack so I'm definitely going to like add that to my rotation so like Safer Zendal, Dr. Doom, Spider Mite Knockout, um, Alcohol with Castile Soap and this I feel like these like four and I also have Azimax which has burned leaves for me in the past even hardened leaves so maybe that would be like a last ditch resort but at least I have four to add to the to the arsenal anyways this one I am so so excited you have no idea I'll definitely be posting plenty of updates as this one grows next one from Owen I am so excited to have this <laughs> so cute so this one is not a win linger eye this one is the SP Nova Costa Rica so I'll just pop a photo here that I believe this one I'm going to show you is Justin Jones's plant. I think this one originally came from Rory and it's like a pendant anthurium, but it's so, it's so sharp. Like you can even see it on these baby little leaves, but do you see how long that taper is? At this age, it's hard to see like what the texture is going to be like, but looking at the photos, it looks like very matte. It's just like very elegant and it has really nice emergent colors. And this is just like a little prop that he made of his plant. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. It's so cute. I, I didn't know about this plant before Owen and I'm just so lucky to have it. I feel like you guys know I love a good strap leaf anthurium. And he was saying like, he'd been trying to like trade with people, but nobody really seemed interested in this, which I did baffles my mind. Cause obviously there would have been more mature photos of this plant to go by. So you wouldn't just be looking at this but all that to say i'm pretty i'm pretty grateful that um people didn't seem to be that interested in trading for this plant because now i have it and i can love it <laughs> it is planted in moss i don't think it was planted in moss like for quite as long a time as the midnight velvet so this one also is going to go into tree fur and soil i think i'm just going to like treat it the way I do my Wenlies, give it lots of nutrients. I find that like my pendant anthuriums are a little bit more feed heavy, otherwise they warp. I don't know if this one's prone to warping the way that the Wenli does, but without Calmag, my Wenlies always like do this. So yeah, this one is like such an elegant one. I cannot wait for it to grow big. Like as soon as it has a leaf like this big, I'll, I'll pass away. I'll simply pass away. And then of course, it's not a trade with Owen if it's not a wind linger eye. So this one is a cutting. It has it has two growth points. There's some polyfill here. <laughs> it's gonna pull this polyfill off. This is wind linger eye from NSC Tropicals, which I have been I've been really wanting one because like they grow so long so fast and they're like that dimply kind. So here's a photo of um, I think one that he had gifted or traded with somebody and it grew huge in the matter of a few months. So I'm very, very excited to get this one going. I mean, it's going to have two growth points. So I'm going to get it into tree fern soil. Same thing. It's not going to need much humidity, but I will keep it in higher humidity. Like maybe my tent or maybe my exo until it grows a couple of leaves. Then I'll transition it out to um, ambient conditions because my Wenli, I mean, this one does great in and in dry conditions i think i transitioned it out right before winter and it just did not skip a beat didn't, didn't care it's growing really fast it's got two inflows it's pushing a leaf 
So um, I'm so excited. I just love Wen Lingari so much. And I just love that about Owen, that he just has this like pure wholesome love for Wenli's. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for this. I'm so excited to grow this. Okay, so a lot of these plants coming up are ones that were shipped to Charmaine's house while she was in California visiting her family. Varying degrees of happiness, and I will get into why. So this first one, <laughs> I am so excited to grow this. You have no idea. So this next one came from our friend Dania. This is Dania's Instagram handle. She grows anthuriums like nobody's business. She has some humongous mother plants. I've always loved her plants. I like she's so sweet and I really like I just love everything about her account. Not to mention that she's dropped dead gorgeous. But Charmaine and Dania were doing like a trade while Charmaine was in the States and Dania just sent me stuff as well, which is so sweet. And the first one I am so touched she said she hasn't shared these seedlings with anyone other than me charmaine and amanda which is i guess really really nice but this one is like a freaking bush like there's so many little leaves on here and this is her hybrid of her tazula red crystallinum crossed with um king of spades nope other way around king of spades crossed with her tazula red crystallinum and you guys know this is like a cross that I am obsessed with. Like I love Red Crystal, I love King of Space, and I think that they have such complementary features that just probably trace back to like the same um, pure species way back. But like it's such a good hybrid and I'm so excited to see how this one turns out. But this plant looks so freaking healthy and you can already see how puffy and round it is. And um, it looks like it's potted in tree fern mixed with like perlite and pond. This is Charmaine's mix. She potted a lot of these stuff up for me. So thank you, Charmaine. And I get to have one of Dania's little tags, which doesn't have her name on it, but I'll know it's from her because it's blue. It's this beautiful Robin's egg blue. And you best believe I will be treasuring this and I'll be growing it as big as I possibly can. I'm just in awe of like how bumpy this already is. I mean, it's really small right now, but it's so freaking bumpy and bullied. Hopefully in the next couple of leaves, we'll start to show some color. Um, so very, very excited about that. And the other one from Dania, she watched my allocation video, which I had said like one of my wish list plants is a Jacqueline that I want to try again. This one is two corns and it's actually kind of crazy looking. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. This one right here, it has like two growth points. It's like almost like a little cluster. And this one right here as well, which looks like it has one growth point coming out of it. They're growing. I probably need to rescue these out of moss because I don't wanna grow it in moss and it's starting to root into the moss. So I'm gonna pot them individually in pond. I'm kind of maybe thinking of potting one of them into fluval stratum, one of them into pond and see what happens. And I'll just keep it in my propagation dome. But my thing, oh my gosh, there is a lot of roots. Uh oh, <laughs> I just looked under here and this is all root right here. Um. Crap. Okay, I'm gonna have to definitely do that today. This is a plant that I said I wanted to start over with because I had bought one from a garden center here and then like it had a whole bunch of plants in one it was one of those like TC things, right? So I separated them. I gave half to Charmaine. I kept half. <laughs> All of ours died. All of them. And I know this is not an easy alocasia, but I said in that video that I wanted to start over with like a corm in pond so that it would just grow in pond, it would have to transition. So this one is like, I would have preferred to get it into pond earlier. I just didn't get around to it, I should have. But at this point, um, I think it's still fine to get into something without it freaking out. And I'll probably have to grow this in high humidity for a while and in lower light, because in my experience, when I'm looking at Jacqueline's and, or Tandarusa's or whatever, they always have a very bleached look but I've also seen ones that look really nice and green, that really nice emerald color. And like, I'm guessing it's like a light thing. Maybe it's a nitrogen thing, but I'm thinking it's a light thing. So yeah, these are my plants from Dania. And thank you so much. Like it was so unexpected, but also so sweet and so kind. If you're not already following her, make sure you give her a follow on Instagram. I'll link her in the description, which by the way, I always link, if I can remember, every one person shop, product I mentioned if I don't link it it's because I forgot just let me know but if you're wondering like who's this one person that I mentioned they're usually 
always linked in the description, like at least their Instagram handle or something. Okay, coffee break. While we are on the topic of Charmaine, this is not, I mean, this is from her. This is not from California though. Um, she gave me one of her seedlings. So this is like an indo Papi hybrid that we imported together like so many years ago, 2021, I wanna say. It was sold to us as like Ace of Spades Dark Mama, but it's not actually Ace of Spades Dark Mama, but it's like a very dark, like really pretty indo Papi hybrid crossed with a dark forgetty eye, like it's dark, dark-ish. So the Poland donor was this plant. It's This is my plant, but I gave her an offset of it and that flowered, so she crossed it with her, her Papi hybrid. Um, it's like, I call it darkish because it has slightly more silver than a true dark forgetty eye, but it's like very, very green. It's like, doesn't really have much silver at all and it's quite bumpy. So together they made this little baby and she separated one out that had quite like a colorful emergent leaf. It had quite a lot of red when she gave it to me and it's sizing up really nicely. Like this is the, what, the third leaf, fourth leaf maybe if it had dropped one. And it's already at this size. I'm really excited to grow this one. And I was like saying to her, like, I just want, like, I don't care how like nondescript you think the, the cross is, how boring you think the cross is. If my friend made it, I want it. <laughs> but like, of course that's gonna mean like, I'm gonna run out of space, but I just want, I don't care what the cross is. Like I want the crosses that my friends made and I wanna see how it grows out. And that way I feel like it gives them a little bit of reassurance that if they end up letting go something that's like really special, at least it's still with a friend. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like I would like to do the same for my crosses with my friends. Um, so yeah, that's a little extra one from her. And then while she was in California, Amanda sent us another box. Which before I show you these plants, I need to preface something. This was shipped like in the earlier part of March. So it's that time where like temperatures are fluctuating. There's days when it was really good. And certainly where Amanda lives, the temperatures were good. And Charmaine was in California where the temperatures were good. But there's like that in between where it's traveling that you don't know if it's going to cross through anything cold. So Amanda wasn't sure if the package needed heat pack. She didn't have any heat packs. So she was out of heat packs and she would have had to like go out and buy them. And I was like, don't bother. It'll be fine. And I kind of insisted that it would be completely fine without heat pack. So she was like, okay, I'm just going to insulate it. But I kind of like took, <laughs> took the responsibility for that. So they did get a little bit of cold damage in the end, but they did recover from the cold damage pretty well. And I feel like that's a good testament to like the health of the roots, the health of the plant overall. But you can see a little bit of the cold damage here. So this one is, I've been wanting this plant for so long. This is a very run of the mill Magnificum cross with Crystallinum, except that her plant, I freaking love it and it makes beautiful babies and it has such beautiful clean venation and incredible like purples and reds and this is um the mother I think this is a I think it was it a cutting I can't tell I don't know but it would have been the mother plant to her magnificum crystallinum crossed with red crystal portier and those babies are so beautiful I'm gonna put up a photo of the one, I think it was supposed to be a holdback, but Amanda ended up sending it to Lauren, but it has like venation like you would not believe. It looks like it was painted and it's like purple, but the veins are, I can't even describe it. It's kind of like furry, but really silvery. And it's just like the most beautiful um, fusion of those genes. So needless to say, I've been wanting one of these for so long, I believe. It originally came from NSC Tropical. I'm not really 100% sure. Maybe it was like she had bred two plants from NSC Tropical, but either way, this is like a really nice Meg Chris. This one is now in tree fern soil. I think there's like some moss mixed through and I think, I think it's doing fine. I'm seeing like some of their older roots in here. It doesn't look like it's rooting yet, but it looks like the roots are surviving and the damage hasn't increased. So I've been keeping it in this um, this bin, but I think I might just pot it up into like a regular, regular pot. And I actually really like this cup for props for selling plants. So I'm gonna obviously keep this cup. Anyways, um, freaking excited for that. Also just to backtrack, Amanda sent a whole bunch of plants through like one of each. So me and Charmaine had to kind of like decide who's gonna keep what. So Charmaine has the other half. They're not the same as mine, but eventually we're obviously, we're gonna prop it in the 
the other person get the first cutting before we do anything with the rest of the cuttings. Um, this one, Charmaine insisted that I take it home because she thinks that it's going to be difficult or she was kind of scared of it. So this one is a Carla Lux and it had a little bit of cold damage. This one actually wasn't that bad, but it's already popped a leaf and it hasn't really rooted yet that I can see. This one's also in tree fern soil with some moss mixed in. So Amanda's Carla Lux is so pretty. The leaves are very like, they're not as bumpy as other Lux hybrids. It's quite flat, but the emergent leaves and the new leaves are very black. I've seen other ones she sold to uh, my friend Natasha, to Lauren, and they're just beautiful. They're really nice Lux hybrids. And even just looking at this one, the overall tone of it is just a little bit inkier than any of my other Lux hybrids. So I'm very, very excited to have this one. This one, oh, this one must have had another leaf that must have died in transit or soon after transit. I know Charmaine cut off a bunch of leaves too. So yeah, this one is doing great. Can't wait for this new leaf to expand, but you can kind of see how dark it already is. Oh my gosh, this one. I am so mad at myself. Okay, so this one, this one is not Amanda's hybrid. This is Tyler's hybrid. So Tyler is Russo plants. I'm such an idiot. Okay, so this is Ace of Purple crossed with Papillolamnum. This was all my fault. So the leaf that it came with, um, I think it got cut off or it was like so damaged that it just died and Charmaine cut the rest off or something like that. And then I was like, oh, why don't I take that plant because it's a stump? Because I think there was another plant that Charmaine was gonna keep that was a stump. So I was like, well, let's make it fair. You have a stump, then I have a stump. But by the time it got to me, it already had this leaf, which would have been really cute, but I brought like all these plants home from the shop because I met Charmaine there. And then in coming home, like I think I was jostled the box and something fell right on that leaf. Like I looked down and like the one plant that was the most delicate at that time was the one that got hit, but immediately put out another leaf. Like within, I wanna say a week, it was like very quick. I don't know what the roots look like. This looks like um, Amanda's mix, not Charmaine's mix, but this looks like this like tree fern, perlite, maybe like pond or pumice and a lot of Orchiata. It's a really nice mix, but personally, Orchiata is like quite expensive for me. Um, it's good for like small plants, but for bigger plants, it kind of just gets lost in the substrate. So I never use it for plants other than pond plants, but Amanda really likes that for her tree fern mix. And I can see why, cause it's like a really nice, like not gritty, like small chunks. It's adding small chunks to your tree fern. But anyway, I've been wanting an Ace of Purple for a really long time. I know that Tyler has been breeding his Ace of Purple with other things. And also Amanda has been breeding Ace of Purple with other things. So I'm just really excited to have this. And I think this is must be my first Tyler plant. Like I might have something of his. I don't think so though. But it is possible that like Amanda would have shared a cutting of one of his plants, but I don't think I have one. So really excited to have this. I've seen the other ones that she has and they're like very purple and like have really cool veins and really elongated, just like really pretty. I'll show you this leaf in a later video after it grows out. This one did really well in transit. This one is a just a mixture of genes. It's like such a mutt, but it's like a very cool one. Look how pretty it is. So this one is, oh my gosh, I have to get this right. Gerald cross with Bessie AF. So Gerald is like this pap hybrid that she, she just named Gerald. Cross with Bess, cross with Woohoo's first night. And when we first got this plant, um, me and Charmaine FaceTimed and she was showing me this plant. I was like, what the heck is it? We were looking at the petioles. It has this like, deep ridge running down the back and we were just like what the heck is it and this one was also kind of like twisted but it made it look like it had a lot of sides it was really like dark red petioles and we were looking at this leaf wasn't there so we were looking at this one and looking at like the red veins on the back and we're like what the heck is it i was like is it a dress hybrid um but it turned out this tag was like buried at the bottom of the, uh, of the pot gerald best cross with woohoo's first night and it already is so stunning. That red sinus and the red veins. I'm trying to show this to you in a way that my camera doesn't blow it out, but there we go. 
that really wide sinus and the red like this leaf has been hardened off for ages and the red veins stay on the back this is an older leaf and that's the newer leaf this one has been growing since i got it and it is so beautiful this one's also in her like tree fern perlite pond orchiata mix this one i'm just kind of like comparing this to my midnight velvet this is them side by side like they definitely have the red veins in common because look at the back of this leaf with the back of that leaf very similar okay last but not least um, are plants that I had purchased alongside Jing. So I wanted to put together this order um, before Charmaine went to California and I was like asking all my friends do you want to do you want to order with me and like they're like we're tapped out we can't buy anything and then Jing was like why not let's get some so this was a joint order with Jing so these are plants from Buzz Plants. He's located in California, so I thought it would be like a really like easy shipping, like within the same state kind of situation. And he had these Carla, Carla's and Carla hybrids for quite good prices. He also is the owner of like the Black Widow Michelle of my dreams. It is so pretty. It looks like it looks like stripey like it has so much stripey in how it looks it's so black those wiry veins is super spidery it is beautiful and also has like a very like kind of pebbly texture so he had a hybrid of a carla which was his like very round carla and i forget what he calls it district i think really round carla as the mother plant and then the black widow michelle as the pollen plant so i was like i want to order at least two for myself because I wanted to increase the odds that I might have one like with very spidery veins. Even though that spideriness is I think a recessive gene because out of all the Black Widow Michelle's very very few look like that. But I was like okay well if it doesn't take on that it will also take on a lot of Carla so there's not really any losing here so I was like I get two. Um, Jing also got one of the hybrid and then she also got a Carla, a pure Carla, which is like two Carlas crossed together. So I'll show you the Carla Black Widow Michelle's first. Here's my first one, which thankfully is doing all right, it seems. But this is what it looks like. It's pushing a leaf right now. I'm probably going to get this into like, I don't know, it's right now in the, in the bin in low light. I'm probably going to get into higher light soon. But it's like, it's very cute, but it's very small to tell what it's gonna look like. My other one, though, <laughs> looks like this. It's It's gone through it a lot, and I don't know if this one's gonna survive. And I've actually been meaning to film this video for a while, but the thought of, the thought of this always made me feel really sad. And when I'm sad, I don't wanna talk about it. I don't wanna talk about why I'm sad. I don't want to talk about plants. So I've been putting off filming this video until like I felt a little bit better about it and I kind of came to terms with the possibility of losing this plant because it's very very possible I'm going to lose this plant. But this one is one that I feel like I actually liked a bit more. You cannot tell by this curled up leaf but it was a little bit more um, spidery. Of course like with every leaf it's going to probably change dramatically. But this one, like it had a bit of like dry rot on the way here. The moss was like quite dry when it got to Charmaine. And I think there was like a couple of days when maybe she was like, um, she wasn't at her mom's house, something like that. So it didn't get potted up right away. But I know she did put it in water because they seemed pretty dehydrated from what she told me. So later she potted it into tree fern. Um, it looked a little bit sad when it got to me, but it was in a bin, like a closed bin, high humidity. And then when it got to my house, like I was like looking at it every day and it was just like not uncurling. So I took it out and like all the roots, all the roots were rotten. And <laughs> so just so sad thinking about it. It had kind of crept into the stem a little bit. Like it was not so rotted. It was just kind of like, it was starting to get a little bit brown, a little bit soft. So I cut where I thought was like prosper possibly rotting. I did a hydrogen peroxide soak, got it back into substrate, and it just kept curling. It was super limp, and then I took it out again, soaked it again, removed the rest of the roots. Now it's just a rootless stem that looks kind of kind of dubious. I kept it in water for a day or two, 
And then I got it into like the most sterile substrate I had, which is perlite. I've been keeping it in my dome with a little bit of a reservoir, just praying that the rot doesn't like continue up the stem and it can hopefully bounce back because like I was really excited to have two. At this point, I've come to a place of acceptance that I might only end up with one. I'm really thankful that this one is actually looking quite healthy and there's a new leaf on the way. And this is in like a tree fern perlite pond mix in a little tiny pot. I can see it is actively rooting from here. So at least we have that, at least we have that. And then um, Jing, I'm gonna show you Jing's. Hopefully she doesn't mind. You will see updates on her channel, obviously, but so he gave us a picture of all the seedlings and like just let us circle the ones we wanted. So I went for the ones that had like the thinnest veins. She went for the biggest one. Just this, this was the biggest one in the whole tray and it's very freaking cute. It's like so round and very thick veins. It does resemble Carla. Um, and this one did also have root rot. So when I unpotted mine, I unpotted hers as well. And I saw all the original roots were rotted, but it had like three, maybe three like healthy yellow tip roots coming out. So I just like removed the rotten ones and I potted it back in. Um, it seems, doesn't really, nope. Oh no. The yellow tip roots are gone. I was just chatting with her because she's now back from her trip. Holy crap. I am going to, I'm going to hydrogen peroxide this for a little bit, maybe like 20 minutes in like a diluted mix. And then I'm going to ask her what um, medium she wants it in, but it looks like maybe perlite is the way to go as well. Crap. No. I'm not gonna lie, this is very stressful. But she's back, so I'm going to message her as soon as I finish filming. We're almost done and ask her what she wants me to do. This is like kind of like how I was feeling with mine, except worse because it's not my plant. Okay, two more plants to go, I think. So the Carla that Jing had ordered was um, Buzz One, which used to be called CC or Carbon Copy, which I think was a Carla that came from Carla Black herself crossed with um, Carla RA8, Rory Carla. So luckily, this one is totally fine. So Jing had ordered this along with the Carla hybrids, but when the box got to Charmaine, this wasn't in it. Then I was like, where is Jing's Carla? So it turned out he had forgotten. So then we or, um, organized a second box to go to like our PO box, which it was really nice. He, he um, added in an extra Carla for like messing up the first order. So th this one is Carla RAA itself. And it's a little bit curly. I've been looking at the roots. It looks like there's like a healthy root and um, it hasn't uncurled yet, but the roots look fine. Will it focus? The roots are okay. So um, it's in moss right now, but I'll probably transition it as soon as it kind of uncurls itself, but it's living inside of my, my propagation dome in a lot of humidity, a lot of warmth, good light. I've just kept the lid off of it, but if it was out, I would definitely keep it domed. But luckily the one that Jing actually paid for is looking really good. It put out a leaf since it came to me and there's a nice root coming out there. So at least this one is okay. I was not expecting this one to have lost all of its roots. It kind of looked like this um, when I removed the rotten roots, but the three healthy roots look like really promising. So I didn't see it decline much. I wasn't really expecting to see all those rotten roots. Um, but yeah, that is my stressful ending of my haul. Oh my gosh. But just looking at her leaf, this one has such good potential because it already looks kind of spidery, just like very thick veined. Anyways, that is my entire haul. Some highs, some lows. I am honestly like freaking out right now. I'm gonna message Jing right after I finish filming. I'll obviously be keeping you posted on how all these plants do. I am so excited to see how some of these do because I just like don't have anything like it in my collection other than Carla. <laughs> but pretty much everything else is just like kind of brand new to me, which is like so exciting. I just have to find the space for it. Probably will be purging some plants. But anyways, I'm gonna go now. I gotta deal with this root rot. I hope you enjoyed this haul. Let me know if you guys have been hauling anything lately. It's spring, it's, it's buying season. I've been seeing some like little mini hauls and stuff on our Discord, which has been really fun to hear about because I just am super nosy and I like to see what people have been buying and liking. By the way, if you're not part of our Discord, you're welcome. You're always welcome to join. I'll try to remember to link it in the description, but it's always listed as like a permanently open link on my Instagram bio. 
Charmaine's Instagram bio. So feel free anytime to join our Discord. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.